Grace you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, we had a bit of a surprise in chapters uh, 5 and 6 this week. You know, previously, as we talked about uh, last Wednesday, Mac, uh, the, the book sets up that Mac uh, receives a mysterious letter, a note uh, signed by God, inviting him next weekend to meet God at the shack. And the shack, we come to learn, is the place where his youngest daughter was brutally murdered. And it is the last place on earth that he ever wants to go back to. And yet, he is compelled to go and see what's going on. So when Mac first arrives at that shack, back up in the, the backwoods, back country of Oregon, he finds the shack as exactly as the last time he had seen it, empty, bloodstained still uh, near the fireplace. And apparently it turns out that the note inviting him there really was a sick joke after all. And he explodes in rage and anger and grief. He picks up a chair, he throws it through the window and, uh, and just rants. And finally when his emotions are spent, he gathers himself up, leaves the shack and walks back up the trail towards the jeep. And that's when he notices a warm breeze starting to blow. And before his very eyes, the winter landscape is transformed into spring in full bloom in a matter of seconds. And slowly he turns around to look at the shack. But the shack has been transformed too. It's now a sturdy log cabin and there is smoke coming out of the chimney. Almost in a trance, he starts walking back to the shack, uh, having to resist now and then an urge to turn and, and, and flee. Could he really be about to meet God? He's expecting God, of course, to look something like Gandalf. He shared that. Uh, Gandalf from the Lord of the Rings. Who, uh, and maybe that's kind of our picture of what God is looking like. But as he steps on onto the porch and gets ready to knock on the door, the door suddenly flies open and he sees instead a large, beaming African-American woman. I happen to see Queen Latifah when I, I'm, I'm thinking this in my own mind. And he doesn't realize it at the time. But God the Father has taken the form of this big black woman, probably because uh, Mac has issues uh, with his own father. But anyway, Mac doesn't even have time to get all nervous and pious on God because as soon as she opens the door, I got to read this part, with speed that belied her size, she crossed the distance between them and engulfed him in her arms, lifting him clear off his feet and spinning him around like a little child. And all the while, she was shouting his name, Mackenzie Allen Phillips with the ardor of someone seeing a long-lost and deeply loved relative. She finally put him back on earth and with her hands on his shoulders, pushed him back as if to get a good look at him. Mac, look at you, she fairly exploded. Here you are and so grown up. I really have been looking forward to seeing you face to face. It is so wonderful to have you here with us. My, 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 how I do love you. And with that, she wrapped herself around him again. And needless to say, Mac is a little stunned. He doesn't quite know what to make all of this, and he's even more stunned when he meets the two other occupants of the cabin, a Middle Eastern Jewish man, who turns out to be Jesus, and um, an Asian woman who, who calls herself uh, Sarah Yu, who turns out to be the Holy Spirit. And after they make their introductions, uh, uh, Jesus and Sarah, you excuse themselves back to what they were doing, and, and Papa, as she invites Mac to call her, invites Mac to come follow her into the kitchen while she's working on supper. And he does so, and, and there in the kitchen they talk of many things, including the reason for the rift that has been between them this last four years. Namely, 
the death of his daughter Missy. And as they talk to her, tears well up in Papa's eyes and begin to roll down her cheeks. And she says, Mac, I'm so sorry. I know what a great gulf this has put between us. That's why you're here, Mac. I want to heal the wound that has grown inside of you and between us. Well, Mac is not quite ready to go down that emotional path. So he redirects the conversation away from Missy. He says to Papa, you know, you knew that I was going to come, didn't you? And she said, of course I did. Then he said, was I, not, was I free not to come? I mean, did I not have a choice in the matter? She said, well, of course you did. And you're free to walk out of the door right now and go home to your empty house. Well, just because I know that you're too curious to go, does that reduce your freedom to leave? And now since he brought up the subject of freedom, Papa wants to point out a little bit more about freedom. She tells Mac that though she is not forcing Mac to do anything and is never going to force Mac to do anything, she points out that there are many things that shackle Mac's freedom. And they happen to be the same things that shackle our freedom. And, and she, she begins with our, fami our family genetic heritage. Even before any of us were ever conceived, there were uh, certain options not available to how we were going to turn out, uh, given who our parents were and our grandparents. And then she says, uh, not only does that limit you, but there's your specific DNA. Uh, two for one, you know, all of us were only going to grow to be a certain height. And there's not a whole lot more we can do about that. But besides all that stuff, there's the stuff, the emotional stuff, that binds us as well. Like Mac's soul sickness, that great sadness, his grief that he carries with him that cripples him so much. It could also be a person's addictions that they battle with day in and day out. But also then there's all those social influences, all the expectations of our family and the people that we associate with who, uh, who put their expectations on, on what we're supposed to do. And we feel bound and constrained by those as well. And of course then there's the habits that we have acquired and reinforced over and over again. Those habits which are so hard to break and deviate from. And lastly, of course, there's that whole influence, uh, brainwashing influence of advertising and propaganda. Working to, uh, to have control over what you want and uh, what you are to desire. Kind of an interesting thought. And isn't it ironic that for, for us people who value our independence and freedom so much, in fact, uh, it, it, it's almost part of our wire, uh, deep down wiring how much we crave independence and freedom to realize we're maybe not as free as we thought. And though we try to tell ourselves we are free to do as we please, we are really far from freedom. It turns out that the fear within us, the sin, and our pride are the real rulers of our heart, calling the shots. And how do we ever get set free from them? Here's where Papa takes Max's hands in her own, flower covered and all, and looking him straight in the eyes, she says, Mackenzie, the truth shall set you free. And the truth has a name. He's over in the wood shop right now, covered with sawdust. Everything is about him. And freedom is a process that happens inside a relationship with him. Then all that stuff you feel churning around on the inside will start to work its way out. The confirmation kids hear me say this all the time. Christianity is not a religion. 
It's a relationship with this Jesus. And God began that relationship with us not only on the day we were conceived, but, uh, but also by proving how much we are loved by God through Jesus' cross and resurrection. And that's why it's all about Jesus. Because Jesus is where we encounter God's love in flesh and blood terms that we can understand. It's in Jesus, a relationship with Jesus, that we find out who we truly are and are meant to be. We were created to be loved. And when we live our lives as if we were unloved, that's when we are not free. Maybe it's hard to believe that God loves us like that. Papa tells Mac... The God who is, the I am who I am, cannot act apart from love. I want to close tonight by uh, singing a song that Sarah Groves wrote that I think sums up what Papa is trying to tell Mac. And as I'm singing it, I'd like for you to imagine that it's a song that, that Papa is singing to you. times you'll lose your faith in me you will lose a lot of things but you cannot lose my love mm -hmm. guiding sense of wrong and right. You may lose your will to fight, but you cannot lose my love. In times of trial, your common sense You may lose your innocence But you cannot lose my love Many things can be misplaced Your very memories be erased No matter no matter what the time or space, you cannot lose my love. You cannot lose. You cannot lose. You cannot lose, you cannot lose my love. Now may the peace of God, which passes all our understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let's sing.